Okay, so now it's time to add some cards. Uh, that's the HPIB. So the GPIB card is an ISA, so that's the tricky animal. Uh, you have to kind of figure out what resources are available by yourself. So if you go into the device manager on computer properties and you see all the interrupts that I use right now, and there'll be more when I put more of the cards, but it's pretty tight in there. I've put it on 9 because there's nothing there. Uh, the full configuration was RQ11 and I put the jumper over here. Uh, that's the um, that's a SCSI, same thing in Windows 98, gets it by itself, requires work on your DOS. Uh, that's the USB, I have no idea, I've never done it, USB 2. And uh, that's the Sound Blaster, this one requires a lot of work on uh, both under DOS and under Win 98. So by the way, this is Sound Blaster Live CT4760. And I chose this one carefully because it works under... DOS, Windows 98, and XP, and the software is available. I have made myself an ISO disk of the Sound Blaster Live, and I have my choice of English or German. So we don't want this. Okay. Ah, oh, it keeps asking me silly questions. Okay, two speakers. I have any speakers at this point. Okay, so. Oops, GPIB ISA. Sound card. PCI. And SCSI. And we'll leave the USB out for now. And guess what? When I try to restart it, Beep of death again. Ding. Well, I wiggled the memory and it's good again, maybe. That's the sound. We don't like it. Got it. No, I did not. So I, I reread my note and it says I have to force install it. So display a list of drivers. Sound. Creative. And I have to take this specific one, 825-2000. Create. Next. It's not written specifically, but we force install it. Okay. PCI is scuzzy. Okay, at least that one goes. Well, in the end, it... Or quite well. I got all my uh, four drivers for the creative various devices and the sound card. Um, SCSI should be in there. Here we go. And the ISA board. We're going not going to see it, but we're going to see if it took the interrupt, which should be nine. Nope. I don't see it. Uh, 
And the HPIB card uh, was a bitch to install uh, and to have it working with the other cards. Uh, basically, I tried all the tricks I could uh, to reserve resources in Windows 98 and eventually none of this worked. And I gave up and I went into the BIOS and entered the PNP PCI configuration menu and uh, changed the uh, resource control from automatic to manual. And when you change it to manual, then you can reserve some resources straight from the BIOS. I tried a few interrupts and finally I found a configuration that wasn't conflicting uh, with the other cards is to put the card on uh, interrupt 10 so the PCI cards can't steal it and also uh, I gave the DMA5 to the HPIB card and once I did that it finally worked and basically the PCI card arranged themselves on other interrupts and other DMA and they left those two available for the HPIB which would finally work so now I can use the uh, National Instrument uh, tools to check that it works. And I think it's called IB Diag. So it found the board. GPIB0, AT, GPIB TNT, and blah blah blah. It's on RQ10 and DMA5, and it's fine now. Okay, let's see if we got sound. That would be quite an achievement to install it first time around. Left channel, right channel. Hoo-hoo! Ah, that was worth it. Okay, finally my uh, USB card, but it's not made for Windows 98, so we'll see if that works. The USB 2.0 did work with a little help uh, to Windows 98. I had to use this NUSB 36, which is the Maximus Decim native USB version 3.6, uh, which added support for this newer chipset. Ah, the famous sound card problem. Yes, couldn't find any interrupt request free, so we'll just do that. All right, put it on seven, one, and five. I have to change the DOS thing. Okay, so let's try this. Okay, so now we should have USB and sound, flash disk, here we go, all right, ah, my first Dolch with USB, cool. I decided to make a little sound system uh, so it would all fit in the Dolch and still stay all in one, so I have a little amplifier, some speakers and a, a connection electrical connection box all right all hot glued together she is a thing of beauty and i got the uh, sound from the card on that plug it goes right over in the little hole and back into my beautiful sound system uh, it better works because it's not going to be that easily removable one two it's all stuffed uh, with all my four cards and my sound system, my two discs. I'm done with the hardware. Time to close her up. Oh, we can sure hear it. All right. Okay, now it's time to get a good DOS installation so we can finally do some ins uh, retro work on this machine. So I'm going to cheat a bit 
and get it from uh, my first Dolch, Dolch one. So I won't have to have the work of reinstalling it all. And it's all in a folder called DOS under the root. So I'll copy it and show you in a moment what it has in it. All right, here we go. Window 95 to Window 95 transfer. And let's suck out config that says so I, I saved my previous config that says and what do I think that yes all right so this is my uh, config that says and basically you want to mount everything in high memory and uh, to leave space for the DOS application that require it so DOS is high and the EMM386 uh, has the no extended memory switch and then here's the GPIB, the CD-ROM and the uh, SCSI drivers all mounted high except the last one. Not, not sure why, maybe I should mount it high too. I want to edit this. There we go. So the only tricky one is the sound as usual. I have to reconfigure it the way it's done here. Uh, so if I go properties, device manager, creative, emulation, properties, settings. It went on 7, 1 and 5, which means here I need 7, 1 and 5. Alright, and boot GUI equal zero so we boot straight into DOS on cam so it says Windows 98 but uh, since I said not to boot the GUI it should start in pure DOS there we go and there we go it got my uh, SCSI drivers HPIB card the CD-ROM, the mouse, got DOS key, and the sound works. And uh, I also checked uh, how the SCSI was doing under DOS, and I have a little SCSI disk to attach right here. Uh, it's a quantum uh, disk. There's a little AF disk utility provided by Adaptec, and right there it found its a quantum disk. Right there, SCSI works fine under DOS too. Everything I wanted. Okay, time to put the finishing touches. That this is not a Finisard device, it's a Dolch computer. Here we go, it has to regain its. Let's see if I can do it straight. There you go. It's a pack 65. So here we go, that's more like it. Looks like a Dolch. And then I have the original logo over here. And the fake one over there. Good enough for me.